This course will teach you how to deploy 10 of the most popular types of apps on the three most popular cloud providers. So if you want to learn to deploy a specific type of app, this course is for you. In this video, we'll create a Docker container for each of these apps and we'll deploy the container to Azure, AWS and Google Cloud. The result will be the same for all the apps. So check the timestamps of this video to select your favorite language or framework and then select your favorite deployment platform. So let's start deploying these apps. In this video, we will create a production container for this uh, React app and uh, we will deploy it to Google Cloud, AWS and Azure. So let's start. First, I'll create a file called Dockerfile. And uh, of course, make sure you have uh, installed uh, Docker in your machine. And uh, in the Docker file, we have to s start from the uh, container itself, what type of container will it be? And we will start with from. This container will be a node container. And uh, here I will specify the version of node. So I will pick 15.4 and uh, I will name it as build. Uh, I will explain uh, later why I named it like this. So let's start with this uh, container. Uh, we have to specify the working directory. I will call it app. So you can put whatever you want here. And let's copy the packages, the JSON to that uh, uh, working directory. So this means uh, we have to copy this package.json. Dot means uh, the working directory here. So I will add a star here. The star means uh, that we can add anything uh, in between package and JSON. Uh, this means that we will copy package.json and also package log that JSON. So we copied those files, then we have to run npm install. So this is self explanatory. So we have npm already installed in the container because we are using a node environment here. So that's why this is uh, important. After we installed all the packages, we have to copy again all the files to the working directory. So this means all the other files. We have to copy them to the working directory. And then we have to build the container. So run npm run build. So if we go to package.json, we have a build uh, script here. And uh, what this will do, it, it will create a a distribution folder. So let's run that command npm run build. So we can uh, visualize that folder. So we have a build uh, folder here, which uh, will have all the necessary files. And uh, we uh, completed the first stage. So uh, this will be a multi uh, stage uh, docker build, uh, which means that uh, we will have another stage. So uh, we have all these files inside this docker container, but we need only the build folder. So uh, there is no need to keep all of them. Uh, we can uh, have a smaller container and to do to do that, we have to uh, add another from here. And this called container will have uh, nginx. So I'll pick the latest version. So if I want the latest version, I will just uh, add nginx here, or I will add uh, 1.19. And uh, in this nginx uh, uh, container, uh, we need to add here, I will create another directory, nginx. And here I'll create a file nginx.conf and uh, here I'll paste 
this uh, configuration. So th there is a lot of text, uh, but uh, you can uh, copy this file uh, on the source code in the video description. So uh, this is required to access the file index.html directly here. So the build has index.html and all the JavaScript files that we need. So uh, we have to copy this file to this uh, nginx container. So copy nginx nginx.conf to etc nginx nginx.conf so we added our own nginx configuration then and the second uh, step is to add uh, the build folder to uh, the nginx html so that's why we name this as build here so here i will copy from build so this is a command from this uh, container here which has this build folder we'll copy up build we specified the working directory to be up so it uh, makes sense that uh, the uh, build folder is up slash build and we have to copy this from user uh, user share nginx html and that's it so this is our uh, a docker container to build this react app uh, in production so uh, to run this uh, simply run docker build uh, i will specify the name for this container so to specify the name for the container you have to add here minus t and uh, the name of the container I'll specify it to app. Then we need the context, which is uh, this uh, directory. So we specify it with dot and that's it. So we'll build this Docker file and we will assign it a name to app. Let's build it. So it's building. Now the container has been built, now it's ready to be deployed. But before we deploy it, let's see if uh, this is running uh, fine, but uh, by running it on the browser. So to do it, run docker, run our app. But uh, we have to specify our port, so minus p here, and uh, the port of our container will be 80. So this will run on port 80. And uh, uh, this is the port of our browser. So I'll put 80, it will work on my machine, but if uh, it doesn't work on your machine, you can put another port like 888, doesn't matter. So I'll put 80 here. And uh, this uh, will uh, run our Docker container. Now I'll go to my browser, run here localhost, just localhost because 80 is the default port and we can see our React app. So we uh, created a Docker container to be deployed now, and now let's deploy it. I will close this uh, IDE because we don't need it anymore. In this video, we will create a simple node app and we will deploy it to AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. So let's create it. I will open my terminal and write npm in it. So I'll pick uh, everything uh, by default and then I will install express. So I'll create also an index, uh, so JavaScript file index.js. Here I will uh, get express, so const express is equal require express then I will uh, get so I will create the app first app is equal to express and app 
a get request to the main route. I'll add the function here that uh, it will have a request and a response. And uh, this will be very simple. I will just do response send hello world. That's it. So super simple. In the end, I will listen to port 80. So I won't start this up. So this is self explanatory, but I will start this up via a Docker container because uh, the port 80 is just localhost and, and it may conflict your browser. So uh, let's create a Docker file. The Docker file will be very simple. So we need a node environment and the version is 15.4. So uh, we will specify a working directory. I'll call it app. Then we will copy the package.json. So package.json dot means uh, it will copy to the working directory here. So in short is dot. I will add a star here. So this will take package.json and also package minus log.json. So if we do it like this, it will copy both of this. Then we will run npm install because we get from the node environment then I will copy all the files there so the first dot means all the files here and the second dot is the working directory then the last command is node index.js and uh, that's it so this is our docker file to build this docker file we have a uh, first make sure to have installed docker and then run docker build uh, we need to specify a name for this uh, docker build i will call it app so this is a command to uh, pick a name for the docker container and then we need dot here which means uh, this uh, context here so it will select uh, this docker file and now it's building. Once it is completed, let's. So it is completed. And uh, now to see the app on our browser, run Docker. Run. We need to specify the port which uh, we need to run. So 80 is a port inside the Docker container. And then the app is our app. So in our browser, I'll put. Uh, for eights. So if we run this command and go to localhost port 8888, we will see hello world here. So this is uh, our uh, container. And now let's get this up and deploy it to AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. Now I will close also this uh, window because we don't need it. In this video, we will create a Docker file for this uh, view app and deploy that Docker container to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's start. Let's create a Docker file. So to build uh, this app, we will uh, use multi-stage uh, builds in Docker. I will explain you what is that. So first we have to start from node and I will put the version of node to this version and I will name this as build. So I will explain later why I named it like this. First, let's specify the working directory. I'll name it up. Then let's copy package.json to the app. So to the working directory, this second dot means this working directory. I will add a star here. So this will get uh, package.json and also package log.json. So after we got uh, those files, we run 
npm install so it will install the node modules then we'll copy all the files to the working directory so all these files will it will be copied to this working directory and then we run npm run build so this will build uh, this uh, view up to a, dis a distribution folder so if we run this command npm run build uh, we'll see a distribution folder will be created here so this is the folder and it will have an index.html index etc so uh, now what i will do is i'll add another from here and uh, i'll get nginx version 1.19 why i'm adding another from here so this is multi-stage building so so uh, we don't need all these folders anymore inside the docker container inside the docker container we need only the distribution folder so only this folder and to do that first we have to create the first uh, stage which uh, we have all the files and the distribution folder and then uh, we create another uh, from here and uh, first we need an nginx file so we will use nginx here let's create directory nginx and inside i'll create a file nginx.conf here i will paste this code so uh, it's a lot of code but uh, i will provide the link in the description of this video so you can get this code and uh, to copy that nginx file we run copy nginx nginx.conf we have to copy it to the etc folder nginx nginx.conf so we'll put this uh, file there then we'll copy from build that's why i named it like this so once we finish we have a reference for this uh, build so from that build we want only the distribution folder so in the app distribution folder that's why we named also the working directory app so it is in app and also distribution folder we'll copy it to user share nginx html and that's it so uh, in the end we will have a smaller container just containing html and uh, javascript and css files so let's run this container to run this container uh, make sure first to have installed docker and run docker build uh, we need to specify the name for this container i'll call it app so if you want to name your container whatever name you want put minus t and the name here then i will put a dot which means uh, that uh, it is this folder here and it will select uh, this docker file so with this uh, our docker is building let's wait till it's completed then so it is built now and uh, to see it on the browser we need to run it so run docker run we need to specify a port so to see it on our browser i'll put uh, this port to our browser and uh, this uh, app will run on port 80 since we are using nginx here and then we need the name of our container which is app so let's run this and uh, is running now so if we go to localhost port 8888 we'll see the view up so this is our container and now i will close uh, this uh, 
window now because we don't need it anymore. Now let's deploy this container. In this video, we'll create a production ready Nest.js Docker container and we'll push that container to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's start. Uh, first, I want to change uh, in main.ts the port here to 80 because uh, all our containers will uh, start with the port 80. And uh, now let's create the Docker file. So also make sure to have uh, installed Docker in your machine. So let's start the build. So we need to start from the node environment and I'll put the version 15.4 and I will name it as build. So this is a multi-stage Docker build. I will explain that later. Um, first, let's uh, begin with the first stage. So let's begin with node 15.4. And uh, what do we want to do here? Let's specify a working directory up. And uh, we want to copy package.json to the app. So dot means uh, this working directory. Also, I will add a star here. So if I add a star here, this will get package.json and also package log.json. So I added uh, the package.json. Now run npm install. Since we are from the node environment, this uh, npm command is available. After we finish that, we want to copy everything to the working directory. So this first dot means all the files here. The second dot means this working directory. After we finish, run npm run build. So with this, we uh, build this uh, nest.js app. So let's run npm run build here and see what it does generate. So this will generate this folder here. So as we can see, we have a dist folder and here we have uh, all the necessary files. So uh, in order to run this on production, we have to have this dist folder and we don't need the other files. That's why we do a um, like a multi-stage build because uh, we will create another node environment here from node 15.4 also and uh, in this uh, node environment we'll specify again the working directory app so don't confuse this with this because there are two different containers then we'll copy also the uh, here I will copy only the package of JSON actually would we'll run npm install but we need only the production uh, uh, packages so if we go to package.json we have uh, dependencies and dev dependencies if we run it like this we will install only the dependencies so there are fewer packages here and uh, this uh, node package will be smaller than this one, of course, because we have less packages. Then we'll copy from build, we'll copy the distribution folder. So up dist, so up is the working directory here. Dist is the folder that we just generated and we'll copy that to the uh, dot means uh, our app here, dist. So we'll copy the distribution folder there. This distribution folder has a uh, JavaScript file, so this uh, needs uh, also node modules. And uh, that's it basically. So in the end, we'll run the command npm run start prod. So uh, this is a smaller version of uh, this one because uh, this will this other container will have only the distribution folder and not modules but uh, only the production packages so we don't need all these files 
So we created the production ready Nest.js app. Let's run it. So to run it, simply run Docker, build. We need to specify the name of the container. I will call it app. So if you want to name a container, you put minus T and the name of the container and dot means this folder and it will select this Docker file. So if we run this, it will build our app. Now let's wait till it's completed. So it is completed. Now this container can be pushed uh, to, uh, the to the cloud, but uh, first let's test it. So to test it, we have to run it. So Docker run and we have to specify the port. The port inside the Docker container is 80, but in our browser, we can put any port we want. So I'll put this port and the name of the container is app. So we can run our container like this. As we can see, it's running successfully and we can go to localhost 8888 and we can see hello world here. So the container is running. Now uh, we need to push this uh, production container to the cloud and uh, I will close uh, this uh, ID here because we don't need it. In this video, we'll create a production ready Docker container for an Angular app. Then we'll push this container to AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. So let's start. First, I'll create a Docker file. Make sure also to have uh, installed Docker in your machine. So we need the environment here, so we need the node environment and the version that I will put here is 15.4 and I'll name it as build. So we will do a multi-stage Docker build. I will explain that later. Uh, first, let's focus from this uh, node, this part here. We want to build our app. Let's start with the working directory. You can name it whatever you want. I will call it app. Then we'll copy package.json to the working directory. So I will add also a star here. So this will copy package.json and also package log.json. This dot means this working directory. So once we add those files there, we run npm install and uh, since we are using a node uh, container we have npm available so after we install it then uh, we need to build it to production so before i run anything here i will i want to make a change uh, we have ng build here in our scripts but uh, if we want to build to production we have to add prod here so uh, what I will do is I will add a new script prod and this will be ng build prod like this. So this will be easier and uh, now here I will run the command npm run prod. So this will build our app to production. So I will run that command here also. And let's see what files it does generate. So now we will uh, learn why I named it like this. Because uh, once we run uh, npm run prod, it will uh, create some files here. And we don't need uh, these files anymore. We need only the distribution folder. So uh, we created the build. So not sure why my app doesn't uh, get the files. Uh, doesn't matter. So let's add a new from here. And this time we won't have node, but I will add nginx and the version will be 1.19. So uh, 
Here we won't run node, we will simply serve the HTML files, which uh, I need to refresh. Not sure why uh, they reload. So we have the distribution folder here, and we can see we have index HTML and these files. So it's located in the distribution folder Angular Docker. This is the name of my project, by the way. You can name your project uh, whatever. So now we are at Nginx. Uh, we need also a directory here, Nginx. And I will add here a file nginx.conf. Here I will paste this Nginx code. So I will provide this code uh, in the description of this video. And uh, let's go to the Docker file. I will copy, copy here, nginx, nginx.conf, and we'll copy that uh, to etc. nginx, nginx.conf. So uh, dot here. So we have copied that file in this other container and uh, now we will use this build here so as i said before we don't need uh, these files anymore we need only the distribution folder since it will serve the index html file with this javascript build files so for that we will copy from build we'll copy we have the working directory is up here. So from up, dist, and the dist has another folder here, which is Angular Docker in my case, Angular Docker. And uh, we'll copy that to, so I'll add a slash just in case, to user, share nginx html. So this way, uh, this was a bigger container since it had not modules and all these files, but this one has only HTML and JavaScript files. So it's smaller container is running on Nginx, which is serving only this HTML file. And we need uh, this Nginx. We need it because uh, when we go to uh, a specific URL, we want to redirect all of them to the index.html. So this is this location. Otherwise, we'll get an error. So uh, this is the Docker file. And now let's run it. So to run this Docker file, write Docker build. Uh, we need to specify a name for this uh, Docker file, for this Docker container. I will specify it to, na to app, but you can name it whatever you want. And we need to build uh, this Docker file. So we have to add it as a dot here. So now it's building. Let's wait till it's completed. So it failed uh, because uh, I forgot one line here between uh, npm install and npm run prod which is to copy all the files to the working directory. So my bad there. So this will copy all these files to this uh, working directory. And then we need to build to production. So now that we fix the problem, let's run it again. So now it was uh, built successfully. And uh, now this container is ready to be pushed to the cloud. But first, let's see it on our browser. So to see it on our browser, we have to run the container. So docker run, we need to specify the port. So uh, the port inside the container is 80. In our local host, we can put whatever port you want. So I will put 8888. So and then we need the name of our container, which we named it up. So that's it. If we run this and uh, go to our browser, let's go to localhost 8888 and we'll see the Angular app running. So 
this was our container that was built now let's push this container to the cloud and i will close this ide because we won't use it anymore in this video we'll create a production ready go file and we'll push it to aws google cloud and azure so let's start first let's uh, run go mod in it i will call uh, the project uh, docker doesn't matter so also go to the go fiber framework we won't use uh, this uh, framework but we will just uh, copy the hello world part so we'll create main.go file and uh, so enable integration here let's create a go file main the package so i'll paste it here this is uh, our main.go file and uh, of course let's also get this fiber module here so go get this so we got that uh, we added it on our go mod so we have also got some so these are important because we need to add them to docker so this is our uh, go up now let's create the docker file so i'll create a file here docker file also make sure to have uh, docker installed in your machine so uh, now here we need to uh, specify the environment which this container will be built and this will be a golang container so I'll put the version here, which is uh, the latest version for this uh, time is 1.16. And uh, I'll add the uh, Alpine here, which is a version of uh, Linux, which is the smallest one. And uh, now let's specify a working directory. I'll call it app, but you can uh, name, name it whatever you want. So the working directory is app. Now let's copy go mod to the app directory so this other dot means uh, that uh, it will be copied to this working directory let's copy also uh, go sum there so we copied this now we can uh, download them so to download them we need to run the command go mod download so with this all the packages that uh, we will install here they will be downloaded also in the docker container after that is finished we have to copy all the files so this dot means all the files here the second one will means uh, all of the files will be copied copied to the working directory so once we copy everything we uh, run go build uh, and the output will be out dist so you can uh, name the output as you want and uh, it will run uh, on this uh, uh, files here so we can run that command also now so we can test uh, what it does generate so we have out and uh, we have a distribution here that uh, we can use so uh, now that uh, we have this uh, this uh, exec executable we run a command which is simply out this that's it so you can name it uh, whatever you want i named it this and uh, simply we will run uh, this file and i'll go run go up will run okay one last change that i will make which uh, all the backends needs to listen to port 80. so i don't want to listen to port 3000 i will listen to port 80 but this will be the port inside the docker container so don't worry if uh, this conflicts to your browser so now that we have built everything let's run this so to run this 
run docker build we need to name the container i will name the container app so to name the container we have to put minus t in front of it then we need to add dot here which means uh, that uh, it will uh, uh, search for this uh, folder and uh, it will run this docker file so let's build it and now it's building so it will run all these commands and uh, let's wait till it's completed so everything was successfully built and uh, now we can push this container to the cloud but before let's see it on our browser if everything runs fine so run docker run we need to specify the port so the port inside the docker container was 80 but in our local host we can put uh, whatever port we want i will put 8888 and then we need the name of the container which we called it app so as we can see uh, the fiber app is running and now if we go to localhost port 8888 we'll see hello world here so uh, we successfully build a production ready uh, container for golang and now let's push it to the cloud and i'll close this ide because we don't need it anymore in this video we'll create a docker container for a svelte app and we will push that container to aws google cloud and azure so let's get started first let's create a docker file here and uh, of course make sure to have uh, installed uh, docker in your machine and uh, here i will add from node the version i will specify 15.4 uh, here and i will name it as build so this will be a multi-stage build uh, i will explain later this uh, as build what does this mean and let's add a working directory i'll call it app so this is the folder that we will create our project you can name it whatever you want and then we'll copy package.json to that folder so uh, we'll copy package.json dot means this working directory i'll add a star here which means uh, that we will get package.json and also package.log.json so we can add uh, anything in between the star so now that we added those run npm install since uh, we are from a node environment this uh, npm will be available and uh, after npm install is finished let's copy everything so this is uh, all these files and folders to this working directory so once we add everything we have to build so run npm run build so this is the first stage so we can run npm run build here to see what the uh, files does it generate so this generates a bundle.js here uh, on the public folder so uh, this is what we are gonna do so once this is generated here we don't need these other files so we don't need scripts src everything so we need only the public folder we don't need even the node modules so that's why we do a multi-stage build so we can create another uh, container here nginx the version is 1.19 so uh, this container now uh, we uh, want get we we want to get only the public folder but first let's uh, add here I will add uh, a directory nginx and uh, inside I will create a file nginx.conf and here I will copy this code so I will provide this code uh, in the description of this uh, video and uh, uh, we need to copy this uh, file to copy nginx nginx.conf to 
etc nginx nginx.conf so we added the configuration and now uh, we name this build and we will copy from the build uh, in the app so app is the working directory we want only the public folder so we got the public folder and we'll copy it to user Uh, share nginx html so that's it so before it was uh, all this it was a container with all these files so we don't need not modules or all these files here uh, then we created a smaller container that contains only the public uh, folder with uh, the bundle uh, js files with this, we can run our Docker container. So let's uh, create it. So to build uh, this uh, Docker file, we run Docker build. We need to specify the name for this uh, Docker container. So I'll put T minus T app. So app is the name that I put. So you can put whatever name you want. And dot in the end is uh, we will build to this uh, uh, context and we'll get this docker file and that's it so this will build our app let's wait till this completed so it is completed and uh, now this container is ready to be pushed to the cloud but before let's uh, test it on the browser so to run it on the browser run docker run and we have to specify the port i will put 8888 and uh, the port inside this docker container is 80 and the name of the container is app so it is started and now in our browser go to localhost port 8888 and we can see hello world and uh, our svelte app is running so with this uh, we are ready now to push the container to the cloud and I'll close this IDE because we don't need it anymore. In this video we'll build a docker container for this Django app and we'll push that container to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's get started. So first I'll create here a docker file. So we need to start from python and the version that i will put here is 3.9 alpine so this container will have a uh, python pre-installed uh, with this version and also alpine is the smallest ver version of linux let's add an environment uh, variable which is python unbuffered one this is uh, needed in order to see the logs in our python app and now let's create a working directory so this uh, you can name it whatever you want uh, all the files will be added in this app folder then uh, we need uh, to uh, install the dependencies so i will add here a file called requirements dot txt and here i will just add django with this uh, version so this is our only requirement and uh, we need to copy that uh, file to the working directory so this dot means uh, this working directory so we'll copy this file to the working directory and then we need to run the command pip install minus r uh, i will copy the file here so this will install all the dependencies uh, inside this container don't forget also once you add the dependency to update also your requirements that that txt once we install everything we'll copy all the files so we'll copy everything here 
to this uh, working directory. And uh, that's it. So in the end, we'll run the command python manage.py run server. I'll put here the host, it needs to be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. So it should be inside the Docker container. So this should be the, the port, uh, the host, sorry, and the port should be 80. Why did I uh, change the port to 80? Because uh, all our containers in this uh, project will run on port 80 and I'm reusing videos. So that's why I put 80. But if you want, you can put uh, the normal port 8000. So let's run this Docker file. To run this Docker file, we have to build, we have to build it first. So Docker build and we want to specify the name for this uh, container. So to specify a name, put minus T. I'll call it up and I'll add the dot in the end, which means it will build in this context and it will select this Docker file. Let's run it. And uh, as we can see, it's building. Let's wait till it's completed. So it is built. Now this container uh, can be pushed to the cloud. But before, let's test it on our browser. So uh, to test it on our browser, run Docker, run. We need to specify a port. So for the back uh, for the container is uh, 80 as we saw. And in our front end, uh, in our uh, browser, we can put whatever port we want. I will put 8888. In the end, we need our container, which is up. Let's run it. As we can see, our server is running. And now we can go to our browser and type localhost port 8888 and this is our Django app running. So uh, the container is working fine and now we are ready to push it to the cloud. I will also close the IDE because uh, we won't use it anymore. In this video, we'll create a Docker container for a Laravel project and then we will push the Docker container to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's get started. First, I'll create here a Docker file. And of course, make sure to have uh, installed Docker in your machine. And uh, here in the Docker file, we'll start from PHP. Uh, the version will be 7.4 FPM. So this is uh, the container that we will have the PHP already installed there. Uh, still, we need to install some other packages. I will paste them here. So uh, these are some libraries that we need to install. And uh, this is uh, the installation of Composer because Composer is not already installed here. And uh, this uh, is a command that will enable uh, these uh, two uh, extensions in our php.ini file. So that's it. After we add everything that uh, we need, let's specify the working directory. I'll call it app. We need to copy composer.json to the working directory. So this means uh, that uh, this dot means that uh, this composer.json will be copied here. And uh, after we got composer.json, we need to run composer install and uh, we'll add no scripts here. So we will simply install uh, everything uh, that composer needs and uh, we won't run this uh, post scripts like this ones. So we will simply install everything. And uh, after that, we'll copy all the files here into the working directory. So now we have everything and uh, we will simply run the command php artisan serve. We need to specify also the host. Uh, which uh, will be uh, 0 0.0.0.0, 0 .0 and also the port to 80. 
So we don't need to put uh, 80 port here, uh, but uh, I need it because uh, I combine multiple videos and uh, they all have uh, port 80. So we finished with the Docker file. Now we are we are ready to build it. So to build this Docker file, run Docker build. We need to specify the name for this Docker build, and uh, we can specify a name by adding minus t. The name I will put it up, but you can name it whatever you want. In the end, dot means uh, this context here, and it will search for this Docker file. So it will run that Docker file and now is building. Let's wait till it's completed. So it is built. Now this container is ready to be deployed on the cloud. But before, let's test it on our browser to see if it works. So to run it on our browser, run Docker, run. Uh, we need to specify a port. So uh, the port inside the Docker con container is 80. And in our browser, you can put whatever port you want. I'll put 8888. So, uh, in the end, we need the name of our container, so we specified it to be up. So, uh, this is our docker run and is running. So, if we go to the browser now and go to localhost port 8888, we'll see the Laravel app running. So, uh, the container is running fine. Now, let's push this container to the cloud. Also, I will close this uh, IDE because we won't use it anymore. This video will create a Docker container for a .NET project and will push that project to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's get started. First, in this uh, web API, I will make just a small change. I will remove this uh, controller here and uh, the route will be uh, the empty route and uh, our app will simply return the default uh, weather so that is not important what is important is to create a new docker file so new file docker file so make sure also to have installed docker in your machine and let's start with uh, from uh, we need uh, the image that we want to start, so I will uh, write Microsoft uh, Container Registry, uh, Microsoft.com slash dot net slash SDK. So we'll start with the version 5. So uh, this is uh, the a container that uh, will start and it will have have uh, the SDK already installed in this container and uh, I will name it as build so this will be a multi-stage docker build and uh, I will explain it later why I name it like this so let's start with uh, the working directory I'll name it up so uh, uh, we, you can specify whatever folder that you want. I will name it like this. And here we'll copy the uh, C Sharp project. So all dot C uh, Sharp project. So like this. And we will copy to the working directory. So uh, this project will be copied to this dot means this working directory and uh, after it's copied we run the command dot net restore after we run the com ra that command we will copy all in that folder again so this will get all the files here and it will copy to the working directory and after we copied all the files we need to publish uh, to a DLL so to to do it we run the command run dot net publish uh, we need to specify release and uh, it will, the output will be in the out folder and that's it for the first stage. So 
uh, let's run this command in our uh, local machine to see what this does generate. So if we run this command, we will uh, get uh, an out folder here where we will have a lot of files. Uh, the one that uh, we are interested is uh, this uh, .NET Docker DLL. So uh, we're interested only in this file and we can ignore all the other files. That's why we use now a multi-stage build because uh, this will contain all the files and also the output. But uh, this other container that we will build now, so from, uh, I'll copy this, .NET, and uh, we will specify as ASP.NET here. This other container will have the same working directory, uh, but don't confuse this working directory with this one because there are different containers. And uh, we will copy from the build, so from this build, we'll copy up, which is the working directory there, out. So we'll copy everything in the out folder to this dot, which is this working directory. So we'll, we created another container with only the out folder, so it is a smaller one. And uh, what is left is to add an entry point dot net and we will execute dot net docker dll and that's it. So in the end we have a lighter docker container which is just a dll so we can execute it. So uh, we finished with uh, this uh, docker file, let's build it. So to build a docker file, run docker, build, and uh, we want to specify a name for this docker build, and uh, we can specify a name by adding minus t, up, uh, that is the name that we want to build, and uh, we will add the context which is a dot. So this will execute this Docker file. So it's building. Let's wait till it's completed. So the container has been built and now we, it is ready to be pushed to the cloud. But before, let's test it on our browser. To test it on our browser, we have to run this uh, container. Uh, we need to specify the port. So inside of the container, the port is 80. But uh, in our local host, we can put whatever port we want. I'll put 8888. And the name of uh, our container was up. So let's run this. And uh, it's successfully running now. So if we open our browser and uh, write here localhost port 8888, we can see this is a JSON that uh, is returning this uh, weather forecast. So it's working fine. So this uh, container has been built and now we need to push it to the cloud. I will close also this uh, IDE because we don't need it anymore. In this video, we'll create a Docker container for a Kotlin app and we will push that container to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's get started. First, I'll remove here the test uh, folder and uh, in the resources, I'll add the server port to 80. So I want uh, the all the uh, containers that uh, I deploy to run on port 80 because uh, I'm reusing content, but you can, uh, you may change it to the port that you want, doesn't matter. So uh, I added the port 80 and also I will add a controller here. So I'll add the directory controllers and I will create a new uh, Kotlin uh, file. So uh, home controller. So this will be a class 
home controller and uh, it will have a function home so let's add also uh, here this should be a rest controller actually i will paste everything so i don't want to import it again so this is our home controller it will be a rest controller it will have only one method that will return hello world so that's it so this it is this simple and now uh, we want to uh, create a docker container with this simple app so let's create a docker file so first make sure to have installed docker in your machine and here i'll add from uh, we need the, the environment will be a gradle and uh, the version will be 7 and uh, the jdk will be 8 so this is a version that uh, of the gradle and jdk that i want to start i'll name this as build so this will be a multi-stage docker build i will explain that later uh, why i name it like that but let's focus first on this part let's specify a working directory i'll call it app so you can put uh, whatever uh, name you want here so all the files will be created inside this folder now so let's copy everything there so we this first dot is all these files and the, the second one is this working directory once uh, we added everything there we need to run the command dot slash gradle w we will execute this uh, file build with the stack trace so uh, this uh, will generate a build folder here let us see it so if i run gradle w build here this will generate a build uh, folder so as you can see we have a build folder now so uh, what we want here is uh, to go to the libs and this is uh, our jar that we want to execute uh, actually i'll remove this snapshot to remove that snapshot we need to go to gradle build at gradle that uh, kotlin to remove this so this uh, will create a shorter name without the snapshot so we don't need uh, now any of these files except for these uh, jar files so that's why we created a, mul a multi-stage build because now we can create another container from openjdg and uh, this will be a smaller one we'll specify the same working directory but these are different containers so don't worry if they have the same name we'll expose the port 80 because uh, we set it uh, to our uh, source folder and uh, then we'll copy from the builder we'll copy uh, this uh, path so up build libs and then we need the name of uh, the file so i will uh, copy this but uh, we don't need the snapshot so we remove the snapshot so it will be like this that jar so this will be the name of the build and we'll copy it to this working directory and this uh, container only has this jar and we will just execute it so command uh, java jar and i will copy this uh, name and that's it so this is the container let's start let's uh, run it and test it so first we have to build it so docker build we need to specify the name for this uh, docker build and we can do that by adding minus t the name of the container will be up 
So we added this and then we need to add dot, which means uh, that uh, it will be in this context and it will, it will execute this Docker file. Let's run it. So I made a mistake. This is build. I forgot uh, a nail here. So now everything is running. Let's wait till this is completed. So it is completed. Now this container is ready to be published to the cloud. But before, let's test it to our browser. To test it to our browser, we need to run the container. So docker run. We need to specify the port. So uh, minus p not t. And uh, the port uh, inside the docker container is 80. But in our local host, we can put whatever we want. I will put 8888. And the name of the container was app. If we run it like this, it will execute it. So it's running fine. Now let's test it on the browser. Localhost port 8888. We can see hello world here, which means our app is running fine. Now let's uh, deploy this app to the cloud and I will close this uh, ID because we don't need it anymore. In this video, we'll create a Docker container for a Deno app and we'll push it to AWS, Google Cloud and Azure. So let's get started. So make sure first to have installed Deno and uh, I will simply copy this code. I'll create in an empty directory here a file app.ts and I will paste this code. So uh, this is uh, really simple. If we, we run this app, then uh, run app.ts. Uh, we need also to add the allow net flag. And as we can see, it's running on port 8000. So if we go here, localhost port 8000, we'll see hello world. So this is our Deno app that we will uh, push. And uh, let's start now by creating a Docker file. Make sure also you have Docker installed in your machine. So this will be super simple. Uh, we need to come from Deno land, Deno. Uh, the latest version curle currently is uh, 1.11.0 and uh, we have to specify a working directory app and uh, then we'll copy everything uh, there. So uh, this command means uh, that uh, we'll copy uh, app.ts to this working directory. And uh, what is left is to simply run the command that we just ran before, which is uh, uh, we don't need to specify Deno, but we will run. We'll add the flag allow net and the file is app.ts. And uh, that's it, super simple. Also, I will change something here. Uh, I want to serve it to port 8000, but I want to serve it to port 80. Uh, because uh, all our Docker containers will serve uh, on port 80 and it's uh, easier for me uh, for to combine these tutorials. But you can put uh, the port 8000, it's totally okay. Now that we have everything, let's run this uh, Docker file. First, we have to build it. So to build it, run Docker, build. Uh, we want, we need uh, the name of the uh, container. So you, we specify it by minus T and uh, we'll specify the name of the container to be app. And then we'll add a dot here, which means it is this context and it will select this Docker file. So let's build uh, app. Now it is building. It will be fast once it's downloading everything. 
so it is completed. Now uh, we can push this container to the cloud. But before, let's test it again to our browser. And to test it, we have to run it. So docker run. This time we have to specify a port and uh, the backend port. So the container port is 80, as we said. And in the front end, we can put 8888. Not in the front end, in our local host. And then we have to specify the name of our container. So this is a command to run this container to port 8888. So it's downloading again because uh, it's running inside the container and I'm not sure why it has this problem now. After I run it again, it uh, worked. Not sure why it failed uh, the first time. And uh, it says uh, localhost 80 here, but uh, that uh, is inside the Docker container. Uh, our localhost now 8000 8, won't work as we see, but uh, our port now is 8888. And now we can see hello world. Now this hello world is running inside the Docker container. And uh, that's it. We completed the Docker container for this demo app. Now let's push it to the cloud. I'll also close uh, this uh, IDE because we don't need it anymore. So I'm logged in now to my AWS management console and uh, we will push now our Docker container to the Elastic Container Registry. So I have a shortcut here or we can search it. So let's go to the Container Registry. And uh, uh, this is the Container Registry. Uh, let's uh, see the repositories. So we don't have any repositories or registries. Uh, we have to create one. So uh, we will push our Docker container here to have uh, our uh, reg repository. First, before we do anything, make sure to install the AWS CLI. So go to aws.amazon.com slash CLI. And uh, on the right side here, you can download the Windows version, the Mac OS version or the Linux version. So with this, you will have access to your terminal to AWS and you have uh, several commands that you can use. So now let's first log in to Elastic Container Registry by using this command. So uh, AWS ECR is Elastic Container Registry. Uh, this is a command to log in. This is the region, uh, region US uh, is 2 pipe docker login the username will be aws the password uh, we it will be generated by this one so uh, that's why is password std in and uh, this uh, other url is like uh, this is our user id so we can find that uh, if we go to our account you, we have the id here so that's it and uh, dot docker dot ecr this is also the same region and amazon aws.com let's run this command and uh, we successfully logged in and uh, now what is left is to push our docker container to the elastic container registry so to do that we have to do docker tag uh, the name of our container was app and uh, I will copy again this URL. So we have to tag it to this URL slash in the end app. So uh, the name should be the same here. And this URL will use it a lot. So let's tag this. And uh, after we tag it, we have to push it. So uh, remove tag to push and uh, let's wait till it's completed. So uh, we get an error that the uh, repository with name app does not exist. So let's create it. Uh, we are here at the repositories and let's create a repository. 
so this is the same URL and uh, it will be up. So uh, I'm uh, just checking the region if it is the same. So uh, this will be a private repository. This is the repository name and uh, I will leave the others by default. Let's create this repository and uh, we created it. So let's uh, push our image now, not here, here, docker push and now it's pushing. So uh, this uh, will take some time and uh, the image will be pushed to the repository. So our image has been pushed. So if we go to our repository, we have uh, one latest image here, the size and everything else. So we have our image in our repository. I'll copy the URI here for the repository because uh, we will need it. And now let's go to Amazon Container Service, Elastic Container Service, ECS. And here go to the clusters and we will create a cluster. So uh, I will select uh, the AWS Far Fargate uh, cluster because uh, it will uh, take care of the managing of the server for us. If you want to manage your server, uh, select this other one, but uh, this is way easier if we select uh, AWS Fargates. So let's go next. Uh, the cluster name, so my app. And uh, I will create a default v VPC for this uh, cluster. And uh, I won't uh, select anything else. Let's create it. And uh, let's wait till this is completed. So the cluster is created, click uh, view cluster. And now we need uh, a task definition. So go to task definitions and let's create a new task definition. So I'll select Fargate. Next step, the task definition name, I'll call it up. Uh, the role, I'll select none. And uh, the network uh, mode, I'll select the default. And uh, for the task memory, 0 0.5 gigabytes, this CPU, so I'll select the minimal versions. And uh, the container, here we need to add the container that we just copied, so this container. And the container name, it will be also up. Uh, here we need to set up the port, so 80 was the port inside the container, so we have to map it here. And uh, we can add al also other configurations, but I won't add any. So let's add this. And we added our container there. And uh, that's it basically. Let's create this uh, task definition. So it was successful. And now let's go to our cluster. And uh, here now we can create our service. So uh, this will be also a Fargate. Uh, we need uh, the task definition uh, that we created, so uh, Amazon will automatically assign it. Uh, we need a service name, so app, so we have a lot of apps with names. Number of tasks, I will select one, but you can select two, it will create two containers. Uh, one, it will be only one container. So I will keep everything minimal, but you can select two. And uh, everything uh, should be uh, okay now. So let's go to the next step. Subnets, I'll select uh, one of these options. And uh, I'll assign a public IP, yes. Load balancer, I will select none. And uh, next step. Uh, here we can uh, Auto scale, but uh, since uh, this is uh, an example, I will not auto scale, so it will be just a simple container. Review, create service. So everything is created. So let's go to the view service and uh, let's uh, click here. And uh, 
the status is pending. Let's wait till uh, is uh, uh, running. And then after it's running, we will have a public IP, which uh, we will see it. Let's wait. So our task is running now and we have a public IP for it. So I'll copy this IP, I'll paste it here and uh, this is our app. So this is how we deploy a Docker container to AWS Fargate. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. So I'm logged into my Azure portal here and uh, before I create anything, make sure to have uh, installed the Azure CLI. So download the right version for your machine and uh, follow the instructions. You will have uh, access to this az command, which uh, it will show these options. So before, uh, so let's go back to the Azure portal and uh, we will create a container registry. So we don't have any container registry yet. So let's create a container registry. So uh, I will create a container registry here. The resource group, I, I have a demo, demo resource group here, which I added just the name. The registry name, I will call it app. So it needs uh, to have a uh, five characters, so I'll call it my app. Uh, already in use, so my container. Okay, it's container app, so which name is not used, so my container app. I will use this uh, name and uh, for the location you can pick your location. For this SKU, I will select the ba basic version. Let's create it. And uh, we can uh, create this uh, registry. And now that we created our registry, uh, we need also to log in. So uh, first we have to log in uh, via Azure like this easy login. So we need to sign in to our account here. And uh, we logged in to Microsoft Azure. So as we can see, uh, it uh, shows this data. So after we log in there, we have to run this other command. So uh, Azure uh, Azure Container Registry, login, and here we need the name, which was which was app. So let's copy it also. So go to the resource and let's copy the URL, which is uh, this one. So uh, we don't need the suffix. So let's log in. So this will allow us to push the Docker container to Azure. So we successfully logged in. And uh, now that we logged in, we can uh, push our image. To push our image, first we have to tag the image. So Docker tag, the name of our container is up and uh, I'll paste again this uh, URL which I copied and uh, we need to add in the end slash app. So this is uh, our uh, repository here. So I added this and uh, after we tag, we have to push it. So let's push it. And now it's pushing our container to the uh, Azure container registry. So let's wait till it's completed. So it is completed. Now we can go back and uh, here we'll go to the repositories. This is our app repository and uh, here we have our image. So this is uh, our image and uh, what I will do here is uh, I will copy this uh, container name. So I'll copy this and uh, let's go back to the home and let's create a container instance now. So let's create a container instance. 
I'll select the same resource group. Uh, we need the container name. The container name is up and uh, we have to select the image source to Azure Container Registry. And we have our uh, container app. So uh, we need to enable uh, admin here. So let's click learn more. And we have to run this command. So uh, I will copy this command and I will run it here. So we need the, the uh, name here or I will write it directly. Not sure if we need the uh, my container up. So I made the mistake here. It should uh, be with uh, one M, not two M's. So it is enabled and uh, now we can uh, use it. So uh, do we need to refresh here? I will refresh and I will select this resource group. I'll select up here, registry, and now it is selected. So uh, everything is correct. I'll change the size here. I will keep everything minimal. So 0.5 is a uh, minimal uh, memory. So I'll select this, review and create. Uh, also, I think uh, I forgot something. So uh, we need to also go to the networking part and we have to map the port 80. So by default is automatically mapped. So we don't have anything to change. But if your container port is different, we need to select here the, uh, the other port. So 80 is correctly. And uh, we don't need to uh, change anything else. Let's create it. So deployment is in progress. The deployment is complete. So let's go to the resource. And uh, we have a public IP address here. So we can copy this IP address. And if we go to that IP address, we can see our app deployed. So this is how we deploy a Docker container to Azure contain container instance. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like, share and subscribe. Thank you. So I'm logged into my Google Cloud platform now and uh, we, will, we will use two uh, services, container registry and cloud run. So let's go to the container registry. And uh, before adding uh, anything here, we need uh, to install a Google Cloud SDK. So make sure to download the right installer. For macOS, you download it here. Also for Windows and Linux. And also make sure to add it to your path. Once it is completed, you can use gcloud. So uh, I ho already have uh, my gcloud configured. And now uh, let's uh, uh, login first. So in order to push containers to the Google Cloud registry, we have to be logged in first. So G Cloud auth login. So uh, this uh, will uh, connect with our Google Cloud account and uh, we will allow everything. And uh, now we are logged in. If we go to our uh, terminal, we will see this. So I'll clear now and uh, now we can uh, push our image to the Docker uh, registry, to the container registry, sorry. So first we have to tag the image. So Docker tag, the name of the image is app and uh, we will tag it to Google Cloud registry. So gcr.io slash we need the project name. So if we go to our cloud platform, click uh, our project here, and uh, this is my project name. So I'll copy this ID here and uh, I will add it here. So this is our project ID and then uh, we need the name of uh, our container. So this should be the same with uh, the last one. I tagged this and then 
we need to push it. So I'll remove this and we'll push it. And this will push the container to our Google Cloud platform. So let's wait till it's completed. So the image is pushed. Now uh, we will see the image here. So in the container registry, we have our app image. And uh, let's go here and let's copy the URL. So I'll copy the URL here because uh, we will need it. And uh, let's go now to the cloud run. So here we need to create a service. We need the service name. I'll call it app. Uh, the region, you can select your own region. Uh, we need the container image URL. So here we can select it directly. And this is the container, the last container that we pushed. So I'll select this. And this was uh, our container. We can add some advanced settings here, like variable secrets, etc. But the only thing that we will change is uh, the port. So our container port is 80. So I'll put 80 here. And we don't need to change anything else there. Next. So uh, we need to allow an uh, unauthenticated invocations. So this is public. And that's it. So let's create this. And let's wait till it's completed. So it should be fast. So it is completed. Not sure why I made a mistake here. Uh, the port was 76 here. It should be 80. And uh, we have uh, also a URL here. If we go to the URL, we will see our app deployed. So it was this simple. This is how we deploy an app to the Google Cloud Run. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.